I'm a mage, a caster. I, I practice witchcraft. Cool. So cast magic missile. Magic missile. Magic missile. I'm out of mana. I need a. Hello, friends. Trace amounts of science. There's quite a few one-off neckbeard stories laying around my personal subreddit r slash red x reads, also from the actual subreddit, and uh, I figured I'd knock some of those out today. Might be a mixed bag, but the first one that I have up here uh, looks like an absolute banger, so let's hop into it. Thanks so much for being here today. Mage Beard by user Pens and Shame. <laughs> Long time lurker here. I've been wanting to share this story for ages. Enjoy. Yes, I might. So this happened a few months ago, on the day of the eclipse, back in April. I, 28 female, work as a stripper in a mid-sized US city. I've seen the absolute worst of men in my job. <laughs> all right. Oh, no, no, it's not all right. I'm out of cash. Hey, you take bank cards? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> From explaining my degree to me, I'm a grad student, to insulting my coworkers in an effort to impress, to quote unquote tipping with a rolled up napkin. <laughs> I thought I was long past being surprised by male depravity. The day of the eclipse though, I was proven to be very, very wrong. Dude, the rolled up napkin thing kind of kills me. They just like stuff a napkin in your drawers. <laughs> it's funny as fuck. Uh, yeah, probably don't do it. It's very disrespectful, you know. And that's the main reason that you go to the strip club is to, to be very respectful. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Okay, so I hope he says, I popped in the club on the afternoon in question for a short day shift. Man, that's when you get, like, the real weirdest of the weirdos, right? Middle of the day in a strip club? God, <laughs> what an awful sight. Uh, the place was not happening. It seemed everybody was out enjoying the eclipse. Except, that is, one loner at the bar. I put on my game face and approached. Yeah, saw a lonely mark. I thought I'd make me a few bucks. I do get it, though. I do. Everybody's got to eat, right? Anyway, this guy was large. Not pudgy, not chubby, but large. <laughs> like round large or tall large? I guess it could be both. It's probably both. He took up his entire bar stool and even some of the ones next to it. <laughs> he wore thick glasses with a balding pate and the kind of beard favored by blobbish men which I like to call the chinulacrum, which is a combination of chin and simulacrum. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's almost a beard, but kind of not. You know the beard, the thin, expertly shaped trail of hair tracing the remains of a long, buried jawbone, <laughs> creating some sort of false definition between the neck and the face. <laughs> Apparently, it didn't work out none too much. Although, he, he got all lined up to come in the strip club. Like, he's he's putting his best foot forward. You gotta give him some credit for that, don't you? Don't you? I guess we know. <laughs> That's fine. I guess OP does give him some marks, because she says, This guy's beard was honestly impressive. Full marks for precision. I squeezed in next to his cheeks, <laughs> asked the bartender for a glass of water, and went to work. What do you do for a living? I asked, after short introductions were made. Magic, he said. <laughs> he did not elaborate. <laughs> what? I don't mess with magic users, man. People like that should have to wear a giant conical hat with stars and moons printed all over it. <laughs> uh, OP says, oh, well... What a baller way to answer a rather dull question. At first, I thought he must be talking about Magic the Gathering, with which I have some experience, though I couldn't think of how that could possibly constitute a living, so I probed. Magic? Like the strategy card game? No, I'm a mage, a caster, I, I practice witchcraft. Cool, so cast magic missile. It's like, nah, I'm, I'm all out of spell points. I need to have a long rest first. <laughs> magic missile! Magic missile! 
Let him out of the middle. I need a pop. <laughs> okay, well, well, well. OP says, what a way to turn a dead shift entertaining. All of a sudden, I was, and I cannot stress this enough, here for it. <laughs> this was about to become one of my most memorable days at the club. So I engaged full throttle. OP says, wow, that's, that's amazing. I never met a mage before. What brings you in today? Let me preface his response by saying that I have heard every answer in the book to this question. For whatever reason, a lot of customers want to pretend that they're not in there to see strippers. <laughs> yeah, just play it cool, you know, a little nonchalant, no big deal. Bond-like neutrality, as though I'm so used to seeing real-life naked women all the time. Or you could, like, you know, you don't want to be rude, so you give her some smiling encouragement. Just make sure you don't drift off into a leer. Got to avoid the leer at all costs, and the dribble. Responses from the guys do generally range from, Oh, I, I just wanted a drink. I didn't even know this was that kind of club. To like, I know the bartender. I don't come here for the girls. And basically anywhere in between. None of that, though, could prepare me for what I was about to encounter. Uh, I'm sheltering from the eclipse, you see? And here he turned to me with wide eyes shifting massively on his three stools. <laughs> if I'm exposed to the energy of the heavens today, bad things will happen. It could be dangerous for everyone in our state. What does that mean? The midichlorians in his blood will explode if they're exposed to an eclipse. <laughs> OP says, holy shit, yes. Please say more, <laughs> she asks, oh my god, why? And he says, I'm too strong. <laughs> the eclipse will magnify my powers to unforeseen levels. And our state is the most magical spot in the U.S. That's why I live here. These three things combined, he shuddered. <sighs> You wouldn't survive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, implying that you would. I guess he could. He, he's a magical, ethereal being. Also, I'm really curious as to what the most magical spot in the U.S. is. Is it Utah? Please don't tell me that it's Utah. It can't possibly be Utah. Could it? <laughs> Opie says, I consider myself an excellent conversationalist, especially after stripping my way through college, but it was already way out of my depth here. His statements hung awkwardly in the air, stewing, until he spoke again. Yeah, I mean, I, I also don't really know where to go with that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> you wouldn't survive. Yeah, okay, well, I guess I wouldn't then. <laughs> There's another reason that I came here. He was once again looking at me with wide eyes. To meet you. Oh? I could think of nothing else to say. <laughs> yeah, this is only getting weirder. Yes, I, I've had a talent for knowing where I'm supposed to be. What important events are happening? I knew you'd be here. The universe. His eyes slid up and down my body, and suddenly I was back in familiar territory. <laughs> the universe knows I like redheads. And strippers. <laughs> Gosh, really, you don't say. OP says it was fate. Definitely fate. <laughs> I got into my stride then. He ordered us a couple drinks, and I sat for probably about an hour, engaged in the most fascinating, unhinged, absolutely fucking bonkers conversation that I've ever had in my life. I mean, was the conversation, was, was he more just monologuing? I don't see where there's much room for anybody else in this <laughs> this diatribe, this delusional fantasy. And then if you do, like, buy in and do the back and forth, you're, you're sort of enabling it in a way. But also, he's paying you money to enable it, I guess, so whatever. Sometimes the tapestry of life is, is a bit too rich for my blood, is what I'm coming to realize. Um, he spun a picture of his life that seemed compiled of equal parts spy movies, comic books, and video game plot lines. Yes, yeah, so that's when I fought Metal Gear. <laughs> <laughs> wow, neat. 
As best as I can remember, this was his tale. Magebeard was born in our state to poor parents, parents whom he never knew. Yeah, this is, this is just his D&D &D character. He's an orphan, raised on the streets. He said he was taken as a baby from his family to the CIA because the government had clocked an unusual amount of magic in him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Uh, yeah, instead of a letter from Hogwarts, the CIA just kidnaps you. <laughs> he was trained as a child in the art of magic. Wait, sorry, magic <laughs> with a with a K. And he quickly rose to the top ranks of the CIA mages. How many were there? How many mages does the CIA have? <laughs> uh, he rose so high, in fact, that he was able to break ties with the CIA and go on the run. Yeah, and when you go on the run, you definitely want to stay in the country that is like the CIA headquarters. CIA operates in a lot of countries, but surely you could find at least one where they'd be like slightly scared to poke their head up, chasing this obese magic man around. <laughs> <laughs> he said the government pursued him relentlessly, but their power, psh, it was no match for his. <laughs> he ran away to the mountains of Peru, there you go, and lived as a free man amongst the Quechua. Their name here is my own insertion, just by the way. He called them natives. Until finally, eventually, the CIA caught up with him. Yeah, they just happened to be in, in Peru trying to topple the local regime. No big deal. <laughs> uh, Magebeard struck a deal with our government, wherein he would be allowed to live free from them, but he was confined to our state. Does he have a magical ankle monitor on? <laughs> uh, this, of course, was not a problem, because as you will remember, our state is the most magical, with a K. They set him up with housing and a phone plan and instructed him not to wander and here is where it kicks up a notch because the phone plan that they gave him is from the company Q-Link. Never heard of it, but yeah, I think he's just living off of disability and this is all his deep fantasy to cope with his own miserable life. Opie continues, as we know, Magebeard was in the top of his class, magic with a K-wise. This put him in a unique position of power, not only over the American government, but also over the American populace. For you see, Magebeard is not only the highest powered magic user in our country, he is also, hold on to your hats here folks, Q. The Q. Uh, from QAnon. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> they, they have quite a sense of humor. He laughed as he flashed me his phone screen, showing the Q-Link logo on the top right corner. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with the company Q-Link, they provide wireless service to people who qualify for things like welfare and disability. <laughs> Saw that one coming, dude. Gets his $300 disability check and goes and gives it to a stripper. <laughs> Money well spent. Uh, uh, I don't understand why you choose to live this way. Uh, I was, of course, honored that the famed and elusive Q had chosen to reveal his identity to me, a plain old stripper, and I couldn't help but ask why. Hey, you're not just a stripper, though, he said emphatically. <laughs> You're the one that I was supposed to meet. And you're a witch. Oh yeah, here it is, the invitation. Follow me into my delusions. OP's not going to. It's like one thing to be interested and kind of, you know, tag along for the stupid story. <laughs> but when it requires, like, any sort of interaction outside of the place where I work, it's probably a bridge too far, you know? <laughs> OP says, goodness. I had no idea I was a witch. He went on to explain that I radiated magical energy, with a K, and that he could help me hone my powers. That is, if I were brave enough. Spoiler alert, I'm not. 
<laughs> yeah, this is how we end up trapped in the shipping container. Good move on your part. Oh, whatever. She's been doing this work for a long time. She knows better. <laughs> the conversation then turned to me, and this is where things start to get really neckbeardy because Magebeard had a habit that is extremely common among strip club patrons. He was an I know you guy. If you're unfamiliar with this behavior, it's when a man meets a woman and proceeds to try and impress her by telling her all the things that he picked up about her just by looking. And of course, these men are never accurate. <laughs> they are, however, extremely easy to fool. Once Magebeard finally remembered to ask me more about myself, and subsequently informed me that he already knew everything about me, I started feeding him some morsels of untruth. <laughs> I told him that my family was Jewish, and he said, Oh, yes, uh, I saw the nose immediately. <laughs> She's got a big, beautiful Jewish nose, and it's there two minutes early wherever she goes. Uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> Glad you noticed. OP says, We are not Jewish. Not a drop of Hebrew blood runs through my veins. I then told him that I was born in Eastern Europe and immigrated with my family when I was five. Oh, of course. I, I thought there was something a little different about you. You're obviously not American. I am American. Born and raised. <laughs> it's just fun to see him roll with it, I guess. We can say whatever we want. I'd start getting really weird with it, <laughs> as I tend to. Uh, I then told him that I studied computer science. Oh, uh, yes, you, you have a logical mind. You're obviously very good at math. Opie says, I suck sweaty balls at math. My degree is in archaeology. That's interesting. Stripper that, that is also an archaeologist. You excavating some bones, are you? <laughs> and I don't apologize for that joke. <laughs> I told him that I did jujitsu. I spotted that immediately. You're a fighter. Your core and back are strong. Yeah, dude, from dancing up on that pole. <laughs> you get the picture. He was all around just an arrogant sort of douchebag. Well, he is actively paying you to tolerate it, but I understand that even that has limits. We did a hot dog man post yesterday. I refunded $200 worth of patron money because I just didn't want to deal with the guy anymore. <laughs> just stay out of my life forever. Here's your money. Please leave. You could do the same thing, although it's probably a little... Actually, it might be easier in real life. You got bouncers and stuff. You just give a little eyebrow raise. Hey, Rocco, you want to take care of this one? <laughs> anyway... Uh, we then started talking about dating, and I learned about his last girlfriend, who had also been a red-headed stripper. <laughs> He's never had a girlfriend before. <laughs> Let me guarantee you that. He described to me a profound love marred only by the fact that she was a CIA agent who overfed him and made him fat in order to restrict his mobility so the government could keep easier tabs on him. <laughs> hey champ, that's really interesting. Next time, keep it to yourself. Uh, that is the wildest one I've ever heard. I've heard people blaming their fat on like basically anything aside from themselves, but the the government, the CIA coming in to do all that. <laughs> uh, you're killing me right now. Come to think of it, the whole time we talked, we were surrounded by agents. Those two guys that just came in, agents watching him. That dancer, agent. Bartender, also an agent. Oh my God, we were practically besieged. None of them made any moves, though. They wouldn't. They knew that he was too powerful to ever take down. <laughs> uh, I can't do it anymore, dude. Here's your, your 20 bucks or whatever. Please don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> just, just leave. Go somewhere else. You've been entertaining for the hour that I could tolerate you, but yeah, that, that time is now long past. But OP's a trooper. Continues on. Uh, as we talked about romance, he became convinced that I was in love with him. Now, as a stripper, 
Feigning affection for buttholes is a skill that I do have and I do utilize, but this uh, was something else. He kept telling me, you're falling for me. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> a dancer passed by and said hi to me. And when she was gone, he patted my shoulder and said with that same wide-eyed look, Don't be jealous. I don't want her. I only want you. She hadn't even spoken to him. <laughs> Yeah, she was just trying to distract OP so she could swoop in on this big fat mess. Surely he's got some money. Oh, he doesn't? Well, that's fine. I'll just take his disability check. <laughs> we can go have these on it if you want. Anyway, he rounded off our time together by buying a few lap dances, but honestly, at this point, I was so enthralled by the whole deal that he could have walked out and I would have been satisfied with my experience. Yeah, I think anybody with two brain cells to rub together would want to skip the lap dance with, with the magical weirdo guy, but... <laughs> I don't know, 20 bucks is 20 bucks! <laughs> he didn't have much cash, so I gave him my stripper cash app. Oh, that's so convenient. Really, the only problem there is I can't stick a rolled up napkin in your cash app. <laughs> uh... Uh, he paid for the lap dance price and tipped extravagantly on top of all that. All thanks to that sweet, sweet deal with the CIA money. Yeah, that's totally real for reals. I guess technically it's sort of right, because it is taxpayer funded, whatever. Uh, days after our encounter, I noticed some payments coming in on my cash app. I used a different cash app account for my stripper money, and I'd been away from the club for a bit, so it was a surprise to see money coming in from that account. It was Magebeard, sending me payment after payment with little romantic notes attached. I sent him a note back, thanking him for his patronage, but letting him know that I wasn't interested in seeing him again. The payment stopped, but he didn't rescind the ones that he'd already made, and for that, I am actually quite grateful. It's tough out there, even for us magic with a K, folks. <laughs> that, is, that is one of the wildest rides we could have taken, you know? We got, like, magic mixed with John Wick meets Jason Bourne, and <laughs> just, I don't know. It was going all over the place, and I, along with OP, was totally up for the ride. The problem comes when he invites you to go back home with him, and potentially then the ride would never end, and if it's not fun after an hour or two, you can only imagine how miserable it would be after a year or two. <laughs> this guy's never had a girlfriend, he picks up on strippers and thinks he's a big man because of it. It's all to keep that ego nice and nice and inflated, you know? Gotta keep it perked up. What better to do that than, than to lie about my welfare phone? And tell people I'm part of QAnon. <laughs> uh, just, I, yeah. Just like OP, I don't really have the words for what the hell I just witnessed, okay? I do know that I like it, I think. <laughs> but we're gonna move on, get into another one. Uh, thanks a lot for sharing, OP. If you got more weird super stories, let me know. Provided, of course, that you weren't too offended by the, the rolled up napkin I stuck in your cash app. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, good story, we'll get into another one, see how that goes. Blaming bimbos and ballsack bumblebees. <laughs> I don't understand that last part. This is written by user Little Ann Woods, who's written a couple sagas for the channel already. Lavender Beard, Baby Beard, impeccably written, honestly. Go check those out, they're relatively uh, short, I mean, for a saga. Both clogging in around three hours, if I recall correctly, not like the the twelve hour epics that we have often. Anyway, uh, good to see her back on the channel for real, for real. Uh, hello, my wonderful, lovely friends, Woodsy here. I haven't posted anything in a very long time, mostly because I had a baby, and uh, she takes up a lot of my time. Yeah, <laughs> preach. Congratulations on that, though. What what a journey to embark on. Also, it's just because I'm currently lacking beards in my life, which I love. Yeah, we don't complain about that. <laughs> I'm glad it's all going well for you. Now, I do have some stories to tell. Stories that I have not yet told. 
Some because it was a long time ago, and the only proof that I have is in Dutch. Some because the person I would talk about actually scares me, and might come to end me. But this one, my run-in is with an actual bona fide scary nice guy, and it has had more than enough time to simmer, so now it is time to serve it up for all of you lovely people. That's right, come on down to the slop trough. Get it, eat, eat it up while it's still there. Yummy, yummy, I do love my slop. <laughs> now before I get into the grit of it all, I do want to do what I do best and start this story off with the desecration of a wonderful speech from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Which happened a lot in the previous sagas that I mentioned, and I'm so glad we're continuing on. So, my dear neckbeards and nice guys, beardos and stink goblins, legbeards, nice girls, pygmies, incels, crotch goblins, and creeps. Today isn't my birthday, but I am 31. First of all, 31 years is far too short a time to live among such excellent and admirable creatures. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. <laughs> Secondly, to celebrate it is not my birthday, I should say it is our birthday, for it is of course also not the birthday of the fabled and fabulous Redditors. They came of age quite some time ago, and get to read this story today. Together we score some rancidly terrible stories, your numbers were chosen to fit this remarkable total. Gross, if I may use the expression. <laughs> I now wish to make an announcement. I regret to announce that though, as I said, 31 years is far too short a time to spend among you, this is the end. I'm going. I'm leaving now. Don't follow me. Stay away. Uh, about like 50 feet would be nice. Goodbye, neckbeards. Goodbye, Bilbo. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Good luck out there in the woods. He didn't even have a, a Samwise Gamgee to bring along. He, he's a lone wolf. That's why he wears the shirt with the wolf howling at the moon on it. <laughs> so yes, indeed, with that out of the way, we are now into the thicky thick of it. And this story begins when I was a mere 17 years old. A wee little girl who did not know much of the world and had just transferred to a new school. New school's always good. Fresh start and that didn't work out for Elliot Roger. Have you seen that manifesto? It's it's up for members. If you want to sign up on the Patreon or the YouTube membership, you can enjoy that for hours. Or not really enjoy. It's more like endure. But if I had to endure it, then, then you should too. <laughs> anyway, I got a message on Facebook one day from a guy claiming to have gone to my school a few years back and asking me if a certain girl still went to that school. Yeah, weird, okay. I was polite and told him I didn't know. I mean, I did know in actuality, but the guy's wording just seemed a little... off. At school, I asked about the guy to the classmate who knew the girl that he had asked about, and she told me, uh, we'll call this guy Gollum, you'll see why later. She said that Gollum never went to our school. He had, however, shown up from time to time at the school gates, to stalk the girl in question. Oh, it's three o'clock. I gotta get off my McDonald's shift so I can go cruise for high school girls. <laughs> get the hell out of here and stay out, you pervert! <laughs> it's not a great look, I gotta be honest. How old is this fella? Does he just go to a different school, or... Yeah, is he doing terrible things that I should be even more angry about? I guess we'll find out, maybe. I, I will pause here for a moment to tell you that yes, I'm an idiot. Yes, I should have blocked him immediately, but as those who have read my previous stories know, the growing of a spine is a fairly new occurrence. It takes time, I'll tell you that. 17 years old, you still care a lot about what people think. 30 plus years old, you don't give a shit no more, and it's so freeing. God, <laughs> I'm so grateful. Uh, anyway, I was glad that I hadn't told the guy that I knew the girl, but yeah, I also didn't stop talking to him. Mostly because I just came to a new school and didn't know anyone and needed someone to talk to. Yeah, but does it have to be that someone? <laughs> just like anybody? You'd be a little more picky, it's okay. We talked for a while off and on during the following weeks, but 
everything he said rubbed me the wrong way. He started telling me how pretty I was, to which I told him that I was gay. I mean, I'm not, but again, he didn't need to know that. <laughs> I thought this would be the end of the flirting, but it wasn't. Unfortunately, uh, it, it rarely is. They're just like, oh, I can fix that. Take a look at my magic ding dong. <laughs> cool. Amazing. Definitely never seen one like that before. Why is it that mottled gray color everywhere, though? <laughs> I don't think that's normal. He also kept trying to attack me on everything I said, as if he was trying to start a fight. Well, you see, he's not used to positive female attention, so he thinks if he gets some negative female attention, then it might make up for it. He doesn't understand how it works, is the long and short of it. Eventually, OP said, I had had enough, and I removed him as a friend from Facebook, and I thought that meant that he couldn't message me. Oh no, Mark and all his brilliance decided to separate these two things. <laughs> And he could message me, I, I know that now, but this was a long time ago. Hence, the following rant ensued. I'm going to post the original text here, but as they are in Dutch, I'll also put the translation into the post. And yeah, if you do speak Dutch, I will scroll the text messages across the screen as I'm talking right now. But also, I wanted to point out that you're, you're, you got a little Red X logo. Is that Red X podcast that you're listening to on your phone? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. You love to see it. We started uploading on the podcast services again, Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Podcasts, which I think is going away soon. But yes, all that to say now you can have your Red X on the go. Not the most up-to-date or relevant stories, but yeah, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Speaking of which, we should do some more choosing beggars. Anyway, Gollum's not going to get the Gollum voice because my, my voice is shredded already. <laughs> I'm so tired, but it's fine. Gollum says, fuck, you are stupid, art school reject without talent who wants to get a worthless diploma in criminology. I mean, better criminology than archaeology, that's what I say. <laughs> what a joke, better stick to women because I'm the reason why you hate dongs. <laughs> I want to be the reason because I'd bang you into a wheelchair, you bimbo. <laughs> It's a lot of big talk coming from a little, little man, you know? <laughs> what are you really going to do with that needle dick? Only reason anybody would end up in a wheelchair after that is, is blood loss. <laughs> Dude says, also, it's you, not your, lol, you're dumb. And OP says, no, just dyslexic, you ballsack bumblebee. <laughs> Which is an insult that sounds better in Dutch, I promise. <laughs> it's, it kind of slaps in English, too. There's four B's in it. It's got a bouncy feel. But yeah, I guess in practice, it's about the same level as calling somebody a piss kidney. You piss kidney. Oh, oh. Asshole. Yep. Nice insult. Gollum responds, You know, when I'm looking at your profile picture, I can't say for sure if you're a human or a troll. <laughs> you can't handle me. Why don't you just block me before I lay you down at my feet, bitch? Winky face. And of course, it's it's the winky face that really does it for me, says OP. I mean, that's true. As soon as you receive a winky face, there's just an, an undeniable bond of attraction. <laughs> that's how it works. Woodsy says, uh, well, I don't know how to say this. Am I supposed to have a higher opinion of you now? <laughs> he really is just, just desperate. Any sort of attention, any sort of response, he'll hoover it all up. Take what he can get and, and keep on coming back for more. Will you give a mouse a cookie, you know? And then Gollum says, you're already handicapped. <laughs> Damn, the university must really be lowering the bar. Then he sent me some link, which... I couldn't open and told me that it reminds him of me. And OP says, yeah, I, I don't know what the hell it is you sent me. I can't open it, but it probably wasn't all that nice. I didn't know that it would hurt you so much with all this. With which I was referring to the friend removal, of course. Then OP says, and I'm sorry. No, bad me, bad. <laughs> but I was so done with your commentary. Yeah, definitely don't apologize, but it's good that you know that, you know? 
You're holding your line and it needs to be respected and I make no apologies for it. Although I can't be surprised that he was so hurt. This doesn't seem like the type of guy who has many prospects on the horizon, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's why you're cruising for high school girls. They are legitimately impressed that you have a car and enough money to take them to McDonald's. <laughs> That's all it takes. Gollum then says, ha, 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 ha. You seriously think that ho ho I give a rat's ass? For all I care, you walk off the side of the earth or blast your brains out of your head. I, I couldn't care less. And I'm not even surprised you did that because you're one of the ugliest people I ever seen. Wasn't he just calling you, like, beautiful before? <laughs> it is nice, guy. What a switch. The mask really slipped, didn't it? Even Smeagol from Lord of the Rings is better looking. It has more charm. The only thing you're good for is drinking seed and laying at my feet. <laughs> Reality check. Screw off now, you bimbo. Yeah, sounds like a real peach, doesn't he? It's also really weird to big up, bring up Schmiegel in the middle of an argument. It might be different in, in Deutschland, I'm not sure. Wait, Deutschland's Germany. Where the fuck do they speak Dutch? Netherlands? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> uh, there's so many countries up there and they're so long and smushed together. I <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We are clearly dealing with a degenerate individual. I, I lean towards putting him up against the wall. We could solve this situation right now. OP deals with the situation in her own way and says, yeah, then I blocked him and I also reported him to Facebook. His Gollum proclivities aside, the man did scare me. And for a while, I feared that he might come look for me as my school was not that big and he had come to it before in search of a different girl. Luckily, this guy was all talk. I mean, yeah, of course. <laughs> Terminally online, do nothing. But, but high school girls don't know that quite yet, you know? I think putting them against the wall is the safest thing. It's the best thing for everybody, okay? You might think I'm cruel now. You'll thank me later on. <laughs> a few years later, I showed all these texts to a friend. His account had been removed, but I remembered his name. I looked him up on Facebook, and lo and behold, he has a brand new account. A very public, very open account. Oh, you love to see that, don't you? <laughs> Let me crawl around in your brain for a little bit. The very first post that I found on this new Facebook was him ranting about a girl that broke up with him and him wishing that she would get R-worded. Uh, yeah, he said a lot of nasty things and so did his friends. I mean, birds of a feather. Big group of creepers just hanging out on Facebook. Who ever heard of something like that before? <laughs> OP says, so yeah, I reported him to Facebook. Again, <laughs> because yes, I'm petty and also he's a creep and his account did get removed. Again, I don't remember the name anymore. I'm amazed I even found these texts, but here we are 14 years later. I wonder if he ever got to give his precious ring to the Gollum girl of his dreams. Oh, thank you, precious. Proposed to me by the rotten pearl. It's not a scent to. All I wish was to catch a fish so you see sweet. It's just a good opportunity to do the, the Gollum voice. A little bit. A little bit. If I had to guess on him, like, finding a woman that would actually put up with all this shit, no. No, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I don't care where you go in the world, people have, like, a, a base level of self-respect. Although, that's less and less true these days, I guess. Well, anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. Thanks for reading my nonsense, my dears. I hope you cringed as hard as I did, both at his and at my old spineless self. I won't be apologizing to you guys, because I'm dyslexic, you ball sack bumblebees. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Woodsy. Out. Good to see you back in the mix, Woodsy, for real, for real. I don't know much about bumblebees inside my ball sack or whatever, but what I do know is, yeah, creepers be out here creeping all the time. They never stop. That's why I had to get my kid off the internet. I let her check Facebook on the desktop. At least I know what the fuck's going on. I'll let her play some online games and stuff. At least I know what's going on. 
But yeah, to, to just let a child run wild on the internet, that's that's why I grew up as fucked up as I did. <laughs> and it's not a good idea. Let's preserve some innocence for a little while. I know immediately everybody's trying to throw that out the window, but I think that's a mistake. I think childhood innocence is one of the most precious things on the planet. And this fella, well, obviously he's only out here to corrupt that, to maltreat some high school girls who, who might not have the self-respect to stand up for themselves. So I would say even 14 years later, yeah, fucking put him against the wall. <laughs> it's fine. The paperwork got a little bit lost, but now we have it. So we have to make sure it's completed. That's all it is. Maybe next time you'll not consider screaming Mel Gibson rage threats at her. <laughs> yeah, she she broke up with you for a reason, you know? It's not my fault you don't know how to fucking hang, which is like, been made more clear than ever, just from this singular interaction. Anyway, I don't want to ramble on for too long, you know, my voice getting a little tired, gotta save myself for all the other videos that I gotta make, but I do hope that you enjoyed this one. Sign up on the Patreon of the YouTube memberships if you would, uh, Fourth Wall is also a really great way to support. Also, sharing the video around, that's a free way to support, but like, word of mouth, it's priceless, I'm telling you. They'll probably like me a lot better if you're the one that introduces me to them. Or something like that. I think that makes sense. <laughs> uh, but regardless of what you decide to do, how you choose to participate or support, I, I do appreciate you coming through watching the thing. I'd like to remind you that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, friends. And I shall see you in the next one. I shall see you. I shall see you in the next one. So until then, uh, bye bye. I got a fess. I got a fessage on Facebook. Jesus. <laughs>